This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment of the orders he had made, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. That sounds like a nice job, and then one actually. Day, something oh. very, but no one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Oh shit, his game started? Oh. Still eating my yogurt. Imagine having a job this easy. Just push buttons, do what they tell you. That's so stress-free. Soul rending my ass. Stanley went around touching every little thing <laughs> in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> I'm gonna love this game. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hmm. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. <laughs> Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes. Truly a room <laughs> worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Ah. Yes, really, really worth it being here. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Oh, it's like a workshop. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible. <laughs> it Who's got cold feet? Sorry to break it to you, Stanley, but that lift isn't coming back. No! You best either get comfortable right here on this platform, or test your luck by jumping to the floor below. Fuck yeah! You know but in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and wants <laughs> to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform <laughs> and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very it wasn't humble. five years ago. Ha! Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Huh? Is it Stanley? Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. Oh! She's been waiting. Oh! Do I have a wife? Oh my God! Immersion broken. Fuck me. That 
That's her Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pouring the flat out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... your day. <laughs> what the... Gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? No. They want to commit their life to you. I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Well. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. What? Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one Wait, day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. There was a TV there. Spend time with the boy. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. I get it. I don't matter. I get it. As he wandered through <coughs> this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. Huh? And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. I love you. But there is no answer. No! How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. see can he just not hear me fuck you how can i tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here he's electing to kill himself how can i get him to see what i see how can i make him look at himself
suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. Hmm. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time you'll... And I tried again. And Stanley what the fuck? The and I tried again. And Stanley pushed the button. And I tried... No! God damn it. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Hmm. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it Wouldn't it be crazy if something as way. simple as turning off his computer had some impact on the story? Like, I know this game is about making choices and doing things that seem small, but I feel like playing with the narrator doesn't even... What if I just turn off all the computers? Oh. What? Um, no. Stanley knew it was... But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Where'd this elevator go? <laughs> God damn it. Oh! But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um... Uh, 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 uh,
And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. Yeah. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. Oh, no, they are repeating. Go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. <coughs> I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh, my God! <laughs> then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it, too, appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. Yay! How was he remaining so lucid? Drugs! And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating <laughs> everything I'm thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. <laughs> and while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not lying. Stanley. After all, he knew for certain beyond a doubt that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. Yeah. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. Oh my God. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. I am okay. No, no. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My <coughs> name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. <laughs> oh, no. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? Oh, my God. And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. Look after her. She mom. rose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. What the? But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. 